So you're working on your Red Team Operations Certificate by Zero Point Security and want to know what to study to best prepare yourself for the exam. Well, you're in luck because this is exactly what we're going to touch on. I will also provide some additional resources to learning materials that I found quite helpful in preparation for the exam as well. But remember, there will be no spoilers. So a quick recap on the exam. This is an assumed breach. So there will already, you will already have a low privilege access to a workstation. So this includes credentials, remote desktop, uh, along with your attack stations. So both your Windows and Kali Linux attack stations. The goal is to reach flag six or further out of a total of eight flags. It's a sequential exam. So you'll basically need to get flags one through two, six anyway. So simply submit the flags in the Snap Labs page and that's it. No report, nor is there any proctoring. You will have either four calendar days or 48 hours of lab time to do the exam. So whatever elapses first. So you can structure this in whatever way that you like and works best for you. From my experience, this was plenty of time. Lastly, you should also treat the environment as live, meaning people are on it doing stuff. Don't make the assumption that it's static and that you're the only person there. When you book the exam, you'll receive access to the threat profile in which you must emulate. Basically, all this is saying is that you'll have a limited tool set when you're doing the exam and you need to make sure that your Cobalt Strike traffic meets the template provided by customizing the malleable C2 framework. More on this a little later. So when approaching the lab, it's best to have some penetration testing cert behind you or already have some experience on a platform like Hackerbox or Pentester Lab. While this isn't exactly required, it will really help you understand a lot of the concepts, especially when it comes to some topics like pivoting and lateral movement. When I purchased the course, I bought it with 60 lab hours, which was more than enough. Even though I was forced to restart the lab twice because I just dropped it and forgot where I was. In total, I used about 50 hours and this included starting the course twice, as I mentioned, doing the course the whole way through and doing the course pretty much all the way through again, while also trying in a few little experimenting bits here and there. There is a lot of content. So when it comes to understanding it all, be sure that you know what each section is used for and where you can best apply it. For example, constrained allocation is an attack to use for lateral movement. So I suggest building a cheat sheet full of commands and enumeration that you would use for this attack. Not necessarily every command in the chain to carry it out, but those to enumerate and determine if there is a valid path forward. I'd also recommend revisiting each topic at least twice to help further ingrain and better understand the content. In addition, it is important to understand the underlying concepts really well because you have access to the course material and can copy the process during the exam. You need to have a thorough enough understanding of the concepts so you can apply the commands from the course to the situation you find yourself in. While it's important to know how the attack works, you don't need to memorize every step. For me, I really drilled down onto delegation as this was one of the hardest topics for me to really understand. And I've actually attached an article attacking Kerberos to constrain delegation, which goes a bit more into detail of the background of delegation and how you can better understand these concepts a bit more. As you might expect, the exam has a heavy emphasis on pivoting and lateral movement. So you'll need to have a good understanding of networks, firewalls, and all the logic behind pivoting. So this includes reverse port forwards, SOX proxies, and all that good stuff. As this can get really confusing, I've also attached an article exploring hidden networks with double pivoting in the description, which I really found helpful for my PTP exam, but the concepts are very applicable here too. Malleable C2 is another important topic as without a proper malleable C2 profile, you can't even get your beacon to run correctly. So the course material is a bit light when it comes to this topic. And I've also attached another article, uh, CS Beacon Communication Analysis, which helps you find and tune in the development of your own profile. And again, helps you understand the concepts a bit more. This is in Chinese, so be sure to translate it if you can't read Chinese. 
Evasion is an important topic as well that you'll really need to know. The practice lab is pretty lenient and won't boot you out if you're too noisy, and it's basically willing to accept, accept your jumps and beacons. I suggest if you have time to update the group policy on Defender and the Firewall for each, machi each machine so you can practice getting your beacon to bypass endpoint protection and act, within, act a bit more stealthy. I've included two more resources here in the description as well. Lastly, I recommend brushing up on some Windows commands for Defender and Firewall and other com common components as rudimentary understanding of how, le how these components protect Windows is also very beneficial. So this is mostly all to say that understanding the underlying components and doing a little bit more extra research with some of the course material will go a long way in helping you pass the exam. This will help you know what tools you have at your disposal at any time during the exam and help you provide a clearer path forward to your objective. But overall, if you only use the course material and nothing else, you should still be able to succeed. There are no foreign concepts that are introduced during the exam material which are not in the course. Overall, I found the exam was quite fun and I passed without too much of a headache. If you're keen to take this course, I actually have an affiliate link in the description. Buying the course with this link goes a long way to help support this channel. So thank you for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe if you found it helpful. And if you have any further comments about the exam, feel free to leave them in the comment section below, but keep it spoiler free. And good luck in your exam.